How are you all? How are you all doing? Wow, I mean, look at this gloomy weather. I'm not sure, the, the camera on my little, on the little screen it makes it look brighter than it is. It's quite a gloomy. Well, it's early evening now. I'm going to take another kind of urban early evening stroll. Was that a early evening urban stroll? Early evening urban stroll, I think, works better, don't you? And these are the kind of like, almost like classic flaneur walks. I mean, this is the thing I used to do all the time, actually, before I started, I suppose, like making videos and really sort of drilling down and theming them. It's great every now and again, just to do a kind of slightly random stroll. Naturally, because I'm aware that I'm filming it, it's not completely random. I have, I have a desire, a path in a way, a lure, something that's pulling me. And it's the memory of a walk that I often used to do from the South Bank. I used to work at various places on the South Bank down there. That's uh, South Bank University back there. That building we saw, there you go, look. London South Bank University Business School. And I used to walk from the various places I worked on the South Bank to the room that I lived in with my wife in South Kensington. Uh, that's a like, oh, good 20 years ago now. And there were variations on that walk, but it was fantastic. And then at various times over the years, when I found myself in this part of the world, down here in Lambeth, coming up to the Imperial War Museum, same sort of territory, I like to try and uh, recreate that walk, or certainly recreate the direction of that walk. So that is what we're going to do this evening. We're going to walk in the direction of Chelsea, really, um, on the other side of the river. So this is a south to north walk. We're going to cross the Thames at the point where, if you look at a map, the Thames meanders like that. There's a kind of, <laughs> what would you call that? That shape, that thing, it's that thing. And you've got the bridges that cross over at that point. We're going to head for Lambeth Bridge, cross over the river. I'm not entirely sure the route will take there because they're all good in the direction of um, Chelsea, South Ken, that part of the world. Actually, this is, this is an interesting place to arrive at, this uh, obelisk here. I'll put on the screen what it is. It's a milestone, it has miles on it and stuff. But I passed through here with Andrew Cotting and Ian Sinclair on our Watling Street walk. And London Road you see there, that is more or less the line of uh, the old Watling Street that became known as the Roman Road, but as I mentioned in the River Peck walk, it's significantly older than that. And here's one of these brilliant street maps. We're at St George's Circus here. Uh, we've just come up Borough Road, St George's Circus, and then we're gonna take uh, Lambeth Road up past the Imperial War Museum and then Lambeth Road to the bridge. St George's Cathedral, Southwark, there. That old building there is the Royal South London Dispensary here on Lambeth Road. And here is the magnificent Imperial War Museum. I'll uh, link below to two videos at least that pass through and deal with this, uh, this area here. My walk around Kennington and also the, the Neckinger, which rises actually somewhere here on what was once St George's Fields. And as I'm sure many of you will know, this was one of the sites of Bedlam at one point. It's this type of activity, this type of walking, just going for a stroll to see what I can see, to find what I can find, uh, is how I really have learned what I know about London and obviously it's a continuous ever ongoing process but certainly in my early years of doing this of concertedly trying to learn the city so to speak I did it by just randomly wandering and noting down interesting things interesting places and then looking them up when I got home and then going out again maybe go back to the same place or maybe go to a similar area and just kind of layering it up like that, but not with a kind of, not with a plan, not with a, a pocket full of notes or even any kind of guidebook or, or information at all, really, just ambling, strolling. In the manor, let's cross the road. This is kind of a bit more of like a live action walk. 
in a manner, in a way, when you read the literature of people like Henry Miller and, and earlier flaneurs, they just wandered the city, being guided by their senses and their desires, tuning in to the ambiences of the city and noting the changes as you would as you go from here, Lambeth, and you cross the bridge into Westminster or wherever it is that you go. And you, there are, if you walk a three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten mile route across the city, slicing through the city, there's so many different ambiences and atmospheres and moods that you will drift through. Here we have the famous Lambeth Walk made famous by the song from Me and My Girl, I think 1937. And it became a dance, isn't it? Doing the Lambeth Walk. Actually, we'll just go down here and look at the medical center. We're not gonna go along Lambeth Walk, but this is an amazing building. Oh, look at this for a slab of art deco, the Lambeth Walk medical practice. What a beautiful building. Lambeth Walk was apparently originally developed as a place of wells and gardens and I suppose by the time of that song the Lambeth Walk it was synonymous with kind of like working class South London culture. So you can see where we are now, you are here. Just going past the China, I think we're trying to walk a state and then up here you can see look we've got Lambeth Palace we're about to get to and then Lambeth Bridge. And here it is in the bigger picture. So you can see we are here. You got Westminster there, Millbank, Tate Gallery there, Tate Britain, St. James's Park, we are here. 109 Lambeth Road. I think that this is the police station mentioned in Ben Aranovich's Rivers of London series, or one of them anyway. I'm pretty sure, I can't remember what goes on here. I'm sure someone will remember in the comments below. Wow. And here it is, one of the great centers of power in England, not just in London. This is the London home of the Archbishop of Canterbury, the leader of the Anglican faith, Lambeth Palace. I think deliberately built on the other side of the Thames from the Palace of Westminster, which you can see lurking in the background. Parts of this building date from the 12th century. I think quite a lot of it was built in the 15th and then the 17th century. It's really got that kind of bit of medieval glamour about it, hasn't it? And you can see the proximity to the Houses of Parliament there, the Palace of Westminster, just the other side of the river. I've always imagined that it was symbolic that here was the Archbishop of Canterbury and then over there, just over the river, would have been the King. Because of course, in the Middle Ages, in the early Middle Ages, the Archbishop of Canterbury was sort of often in conflict with the monarch because the monarch thought they could do what they want. And the Norman monarchs, they ruled with the divine right of God. Who could stand between the monarch and God? Well, the Archbishop of Canterbury, of course, thought they could because they were God's representative on earth. So they thought, well, you know, we're independent of the king. A lot of the kings weren't too keen on that idea. And of course, famously, that came to our head with Thomas a Becket and the murder of Thomas a Becket. So I always imagine this great tension, this simmering tension being transmitted across the Thames between the two palaces. And here we have Lambeth Bridge, which we're about to cross. It's built on the site of the old horse ferry that carted people across the river from Westminster to Lambeth and back would have been one of the busiest routes across the Thames, one of the best spots for the old watermen to carry the Archbishop and his retinue across the river. And the view looking west is a bit of a sad sight, isn't it, with all those skyscrapers now going all the way along the river. Just down there you see um, MI6, but we'll talk about that in, in a second. This rather ominous looking building here is uh, Thames House, the headquarters of MI5, the intelligence agency. It's got a, got a kind of almost Orwellian Ministry of Truth look about it, hasn't it? And just over the river there, amongst that cluster of buildings, is 
where James Bond works over there at MI6. Two intelligence agencies on either side of the river. Maybe that's almost like a simmering tension between two competing power blocks. So I think we'll go up Horse Ferry Road in the direction of uh, Victoria Station. Uh, so I don't, I don't usually walk this way when I do this walk, so something a little bit new. Thorny Street being a reference to Thorny Island when this was once an island in the Thames. A marshy island in the Thames. There are so many diversions and distractions. Here we have St John Smith Square, quite a famous church. And Smith Square is, uh, certainly always was where the Tory party, Conservative Party HQ was. And this has become a slightly busy building in recent years. This is the European Parliament's uh, liaison office in London. But once that was a pretty easy job and now it's become, I imagine, impossibly difficult. I'm really keen not to get drawn that way towards Westminster, Westminster Abbey and all that stuff. I want to keep going west. Some of you might be going, why? But the focus really of my videos in this channel is, was always meant to be the outer suburb, the Overlook London, like my book, This Other London, Adventures in the Overlook City. And so you can't really claim that Westminster is overlooked, but it is still really, really interesting. And I will link below to a video I made where I went inside the House of Commons there. I was uh, a guest of, <laughs> actually I was a guest of a, uh, an MP. And uh, it, was a, it was a good evening. We saw some interesting stuff. But I'm gonna keep going west towards, um, towards Pimlico and maybe hopefully towards Chelsea, although this walk is uh, meandered quite a lot <laughs> this evening and I haven't really covered much ground at all. We go street map again. Where are we? We are here. You can see we're here on Horse Free Road. That's where we just went on our detour into Smith Square. We're going to keep going. Maybe we'll go Marsham Street. That might be quite good. Or we can carry on and go through Vincent Square. I think here, Westminster School Plainfields is one of the places where the Tyburn uh, ends up, where it runs into. There was a pond there. In fact, is that a nice tennis court? But we've covered that in a previous video. Again, link below. This is a really beautiful little spot that I've never been to before. St. John's Gardens. This was originally intended as the, uh, as the cemetery for St. John's Smith Square, just across the road. Apparently it became overcrowded within 20 years of opening in the 1730s. Isn't it beautiful? What a beautiful, tranquil spot in this busy part of the city. I'm going to go down Marsham Street now in the direction of Pimlico. A passport to Pimlico. These are quite some eccentric flats here in Page Street. They look uh, 20th century, so I guess I wonder whether they're sort of, I don't know, like Art Deco inspired maybe? Be interesting, wouldn't it? And this one here is called Roger's House, would you believe? There's definitely going to be a story behind these buildings here. They've got a vaguely institutional feel to them. I'm beginning to wonder whether they might be uh, police accommodation or something like that, but certainly they look like some kind of social housing. That's fantastic. I just got chatting to a gentleman coming out of one of the blocks and I said, look, these are amazing buildings. And he said, yeah, they're pretty unique too. And then he proceeded to tell me all about the, the history of the area. So these flats here were all built on uh, land owned by the Duke of Westminster, who apparently still does own the freehold. And there was a big flood. I think at some point all this land was flooded and he said you know, the water came up to here, it flooded so high. So he gave the land, or he allowed, I should say, Westminster City Council to build social housing on here as long as it was built for the deserving poor, as they used to call it back then. And these buildings here behind me, these brown brick buildings, they were the first dwellings built on this site. And these more eccentric ones were built later and he said apparently there was a, a debtor's prison just around the corner. We'll go there actually. It's on the, it was one of the few places I had on a route, actually, the Morpeth Arms. And that was a debtor's prison where they used to originally transport people to Australia from. And apparently the, the colourful 
flats here, the kind of the checkered design. It's apparently it's a, it's a reference to the old debtors' prison in the area, which is an interesting thing to build into the uh, into the design. And so there's even on the back there, there's even like uh, cell doors or doors that look like cell doors. Absolutely fascinating. It was also saying as well that there was. Um, Tot Hill back there, you see Tot Hill House. Well, that's a reference to the area, the hill, Tot Hill, uh, where the Houses of Parliament were. That area is known Tot Hill Fields, Tot Hill. He said there was a Tot Hill farm just up the road from here. Uh, there was a dairy, even in the lifetime of some of the older residents of the estate here, that they, uh, when they were children, when he, I suppose, that gentleman there, when he was a younger man, there was an old guy there who remembers being sent to the farm to get milk and cheese and butter. Isn't it wonderful? This close to central London. And this is a classic place, the Regency Calf. Genuine in old 50s, 60s calf, a greasy spoon. Look at it, really beautiful. Sadly, obviously it's closed, it's the evening. That's a proper old look for mica table, traditional calf. This is not pastiche, this is the original fittings. Isn't it amazing? So we're gonna head along Regency Street now. It's lovely to see a bit of sun. And apparently it was in a building in Regency Street that the great train robbers plotted their heist. And this is the other side of the, of the original social housing built on the, on the flooded fields of the Duke of Westminster. I should add as well that these flats are, and the, uh, the other more sort of checkerboard flats, they still are social housing managed by Westminster City Council. These are some interesting looking old cottages here in Fine Street. A remnant of when this would have been, I suppose. There would have been open fields here. In fact, well, I suppose there still are open fields. There's the playing fields of the school up there, I think. You see, it's always worth stopping to talk to people. You never know what people know. <laughs> it's incredible, isn't it? I'm tempted to go up Vincent Street. Look, I think I know that's just some sports pitches. I think that's the, the playing fields of the school. So carry on down Regency Street and then we're into Pimlico and we will lose the light. So we'll just keep going until the filming isn't viable anymore. This is Vauxhall Bridge Road. So we'll just go up here a little bit further in the direction of Victoria before branching off. We'll just go down Morton Street into Pimlico. This is Tatchbrook Street. The fields of Pimlico, one of the sort of parcels of land that was handed around between various royal members of the royal family, Norman barons, that kind of thing. A bit like Belgravia, which was just something that was given to somebody in a dowry and they developed it. And Belgravia is often held up as the most expensive part of London. And that's just to the north of where we are now. But Pimlico, you can see, is loads of these streets of beautiful Regency architecture. Many of these now are, are hotels, I believe. I think there are probably a few sort of diplomatic residences in this area as well, but I think it's particularly sort of like the, uh, the hotel trade associated with Victoria Station. But there was actually a wharf down here on the river. The gentleman back there was telling me was telling me about that. It was a war from people with, hey, here you go. It's just so friendly here. Cheers, mate. There you go. People in Westminster are really friendly. There you go. Yeah, you can see, look, these beautiful streets, Morton Street here. But even in the time that I've lived in London, Pimlico was also quite well known for uh, bedsits, quite cheap bedsits. There was a lot of quite cheap housing here. And if you watch the famous film, passport to Pimlico, the Ealing comedy, the post-war Ealing comedy, you see how Pimlico had become a quite a sort of working class area in the, in the 20th century, in the mid 20th century. It's a wonderful film about the residents of Pimlico declaring independence. Um, and like I say, it retained some of that working class nature. I think even sort of 30 years ago, I could say it was a place where you could you could find cheap accommodation, you could find a room, just a bed sit or something. Here we go, here's the map. We are here, we're going along Looper Street at the moment. You can see, look, we're back near the river again. And we're gonna actually turn along Sutherland Street here, and that's when we'll go up 
towards Chelsea. Is it Churchill Gardens? Winston Churchill lived in the area. And here it is in the broader context of the area. River Thames, Vauxhall and Nine Elms over there. St James's Park here and we are here going up through Pimlico towards Chelsea. So here we have a statue to Thomas Cubitt, the, the developer. We came across Cubitt when we walked around the Isle of Dogs, didn't we? He was a, a big developer in Victorian London, born in 1788, died in 1855. I have been uh, seduced by St George's Drive. I love these houses. They're such a kind of postcard image of London, aren't they? These look, these pillars here. This is what you, uh, there's that montage, isn't there, in uh, train spotting when they arrive in London and it's these kind of houses, isn't it? This is the rather grand Warwick Square. Isn't it beautiful? I really do love this type of walk. Just this kind of random drifting through the city. I feel like this part of London it's particularly good for that. And as I said that, I realized that actually, I can't think of a part of London that isn't good for that. I've loved doing it wherever I am in the city. But I suppose I have particular memories of wandering around these streets here when uh, in those years when I lived in a little tiny bed set, a little tiny room in South Kensington in an old converted hotel. And uh, I was doing various kind of part-time sort of temporary jobs. I think I had four at the time. So I was always walking around from one place to another. I think I was doing a little bit of performing in those days as well. So occasionally I had a thing I was doing in a pub. It was great, it was wonderful. And I was, <laughs> I was completely skinned at the time, but I was very happy and always entertained and always finding new places and you know, building on my knowledge of the city. And also just stimulating my brain creatively in many ways as well. There you go, we've got the Albanian consular there. I'm going to get a visa to go to Albania. This is where you've got to come to. We're starting to lose the light, but what we'll do is we'll go along Warwick Way and then we may just get to Sloan Square before dark. And this is where you get that real mixture of ambiances that I was mentioning earlier. You get a change in the architecture where you've got bomb sites, you've got new builds, but then also you've got this kind of correlation between kind of quite cheap actually hotels where people are staying here because it's close to Victoria Station but then you've also got some quite fancy restaurants as well in the streets catering to tourists but also catering to the local residents some of whom are obviously very well to do. And this is an incredible vista here as we pass over the railway bridge see this massive wide open sky and the various kind of social housing, council estates, Peabody estates, etc. on either side around what would have been, been, I guess, fairly cheap land around the railways. If, if I punch in a bit, you'll just see the chimneys of Battersea Power Station, which is forever being converted into, into housing. That scheme is taking forever and ever and ever. And just on the other side of Ebury Bridge, the ambience changes once again as we make the final approach into Sloane Square. Look at this really beautiful, elaborate mosaic drinking fountain. What does it say there? 1795. Isn't this lovely? So these are some really lovely Peabody flats here, Coles Hill flats. I've always been really enamored by the architecture of these flats. And there's some on the other side as well. Uh, near the uh, Physic Garden, the Chelsea Physic Garden. But these are really beautiful, aren't they? You don't associate Chelsea and Sloane Square with social housing, but there are council flats and housing association flats around this area. The Orange Pub over there, which tells me that this must be Orange Square. It's a really beautiful little spot here. This statue here of a, of a young Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. I'm going to take a leap into the dark and indicate that it must mean that he has some sort of association with this area, with Orange Square.
and this is Pimlico Road. We're just going to turn right here into Holborn Place, or Holbein Place, sorry I should say. And here we are at Sloan Square, nesting ground of the Sloan Ranger, stalking ground of the uh, original 70s punks, if you believe the postcards. The famous Royal Court Theatre produce the original angry young men look back in anger and all that stuff they've set, they've set up some uh, like tables and bars and stuff in the middle of Sloan Square isn't that delightful I am going to look for somewhere to drink but I don't think that's my bag maybe it is maybe I'll give it a go so that concludes our walk here at Sloan Square it's, it's getting dark now I'm using the light of the uh, of the Hugo Boss shop but the sun has gone down and I need a pint you know I've done a lovely walk that was a cracking walk I can't tell you how much I enjoyed that I love those types of walks as I said it's really stimulating for the mind just to drift across the city and I do have a kind of fondness for this part of, of London so it's a great part, place to kind of conclude this aimless stroll this this bit of flanerery is that the correct one a flaneur I think that a flaneur does flanerery re, 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 re. I'm not sure anyway thanks for coming along on that stroll with me thanks for indulging in something a bit more unplanned and random than, than usual than you've become used to it's going to happen from time to time because I absolutely love doing it so as I always like to say I look forward to seeing you all on the next walk wherever that may be and genuinely this was never on the agenda so it could be anywhere I mean, Richard Branson's just been in the space, so 